All right, this is a reasonably important development for anyone who's following the DIY build guide, and it comes to us from Bob Grainer of the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. He's made some important observations, uh, which he spoke about on a recent live stream, the full version of which can be found on his Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project channel. And in this same video, he makes another significant observation uh, and draws some strong correlations with the work of Matsumoto, Ken Shoulders, and other scientists who studied the phenomena of ball lightning or plasmoids. And I'm working on a second video covering this development uh, in layman's terms at the moment, but I wanted to just get this other announcement out quickly uh, so that anyone who's attempting to source parts for their own build can make the necessary adjustments regarding this other observation. So essentially, Bob recently flew into the UK to examine the original first thunderstorm generator prototype that was designed and built by Malcolm Bendel and his team at the time about eight years ago. And he took micro and macro videography of the original small and large thunderstorm generator spheres, looking more closely at the sample and referencing correlating experiments, um, as I noted above, which provided significant results from the plasma physics angle but the other thing he explored was the potential causes behind the precise deformation of the metal uh, of the sphere around the inlet pipe, something which we've noted uh, occurring a number of times now on various prototypes. So Bob provides his reasoning for the fact that he believes this deformation could be caused because um, of a differential of the thermal heat expansion coefficient between um, potentially two metals used, 304 stainless steel, for the sphere, uh, in this case the three inch sphere, and what he believes could have been mild steel uh, in the case of this original prototype for the inlet, uh, inlet pipe connected to it. And there's some notes on that, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, we've so far speculated that the precise deformation was caused by an implosion, caused by pressure or a magnetic moment, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and that was the warning that I gave at the beginning of my original build guide video to be aware of. And this still could potentially be the case. Uh, however, Bob's explanation here is another hypothesis, uh, which he provides some reasoning for, which we should explore and be aware of. So he ran some calculations on the thermal properties of the material, and his calculations agree with his hypothesis. Therefore, he quite emphatically recommends that if you do not wish this metal deformation to potentially occur at some point when you're trialing your thunderstorm generator, that you should use the same metal for both the spheres and the pipes. Currently, the best choice that's been trialed is 304 stainless steel, uh, specifically 304 alloy, um, for certain properties which are elucidated at length in Bob's videos, um, if you're a scientist looking to understand this more deeply. And Bob also notes that based on its similar properties, uh, 316 stainless steel, 316 uh, could be an appropriate choice. So this is where we have to note that Malcolm claims that the metals used in the original prototype, both the spheres and the tube that Bob examined, were all 304 stainless steel and verified as non-magnetic uh, before they used them, before they ran any trials and any anomalies could have occurred, uh, rather than the pipe being mild steel as Bob's initial observations uh, eight years later suggested to him. So this is entirely possible. It could be either way. Um, you know, Bob makes a good case uh, for his thermal expansion coefficient uh, argument there if it was mild steel. So we need to be aware of this. We need to use the same materials. Um, it, there is clearly significant changes occurring in the structure of the metals when the prototypes are being run, uh, which we're going to get to in that next update video based on Bob's further observations tomorrow. So I didn't state to use the same metals for both the spheres and the pipes in the build guide, and I apologize if you've ordered any parts already, but I'll be honest, that's why I held off doing that video for so long uh, and released it under audience pressure. I'm not kidding when I say things are moving fast and new optimizations and data will be coming at us quite relentlessly. That is happening now. So to repeat, to avoid the potential deformation of the spheres, it's best to use the same metal for both of the spheres, both the spheres and the pipes. This is because if you use two different metals, there could be a significant difference between their thermal expansion coefficients. Uh, if temperatures over 800 degrees are reached, which is entirely possible, then the stainless steel can expand up to 8 millimeters more than the other metals uh, used in the pipe, uh, you know, in this hypothesis mild steel from Bob. At any rate, um, even if it's not the actual cause of the deformations we see in Malcolm's original sphere, if it's some magnetic or implosion 
pressure anomaly going on. Um, it's regardless something that we need to take into account when we're prototyping ourselves. So please let us know if you gain any further data around this when you're experimenting yourself. And thank you, Bob, for this observation. And if you want to better understand the difference between ferritic and austenitic stainless steels more deeply, uh, you can check out the article on this topic recommended by Bob uh, in that video and linked to below from Scientific Modern America. And another important thing he notes for when you're conducting your trials on the, your finished build, um, if you're going to be analyzing anything to do with magnetism during your trials, uh, don't bring a magnet anywhere near it or run the unit at all before taking some initial control measurements. Stainless steel is composed primarily of iron, uh, which is, of course, ferromagnetic. However, three or four stainless steel alloy, um, which is one of the most common stainless steels available and what we're using here, uh, contains a percentage of nickel as well as small amounts of manganese, carbon, and nitrogen, which alters its structures so that the alloy becomes non-magnetic at room temperature. So despite this, though, uh, if the alloy is mechanically deformed, um, for example, bent at room temperature, it will partially transform to the ferritic phase and be can become partially ferromagnetic. So there are also a number of other processes going on uh, in the thunderstorm generator when it's running, which could have the potential to magnetize areas of the metal. So essentially, just don't go anywhere near it with a magnet or run the motor until you have taken your control measurements immediately after finishing your prototype. Uh, so you could magnetize areas of it accidentally, and if you do, it's really not an easy process to reset this if you want to take those control measurements, which could be important. So it requires heating above Curie point and annealing and adding nitrogen. So it's just best to keep magnets away until you have taken your thorough control measurements at the beginning. So Bob recommends the free Android app for doing this, uh, Sensors Multi-Tool, to take your measurements um, if you don't have a more precise measuring tool already. And he also recommends maybe using an older model pre-AI um, sensor Android phone, if possible, just to count out any AI alteration messing with the readings uh, that just could be possible with newer model phones. Should be fine, though. And so one more quick mention, um, a number of people are speculating if they can take out parts um, of the design of what we published in the build guide, and the answer is maybe. Um, can you take out the spheres? My current opinion, based on what I've seen so far, is that I doubt it. Um, I know of at least one group of scientists carrying out these trials uh, exactly with a control with no spheres, so I'll await their results uh, to make the final call. No point speculating too much. But if we do remove the the spheres. Uh, we are getting back to something more similar to the gate, um, and this would be handy for building it because uh, it's less parts. But you know, it's it has its issues. Um, it's a very curious invention, and I offer my respect to Paul Pantone and all those who've experimented with his work over the years. Um, however, the gate reactor certainly has its issues and its hazards, um, and as far as I'm aware, no one's really got around um, those yet. Um, I've spoken to a number of people who've built them. And although the thunderstorm generator does share some basic obvious similarities with the Gee reactor, uh, namely the nested pipes, Malcolm came across his idea for the thunderstorm generator initially from a bit of a different angle, um, building particularly on the work of Ken Shoulders and Martin Fleischmann, uh, who conducted their own significant research in this area too. So the thunderstorm generator is a different device to the Gee, uh, running on different principles of design and physics, and from the accounts I have so far, the spheres and the dimensions and the ratios employed in the current design seem to be integral aspects uh, to the thunderstorm generator. So those who've experimented with key reactors before, uh, they should be well primed to be able to put one of these together um, and investigate the thunderstorm generator's process. Uh, understanding the practicalities of putting the gate together um, and running that will really probably help a lot uh, for conducting your experiments on the Thunderstorm generator build and trials. But just be careful of believing that this is just a new version of the Geet Reactor. Um, the factual independent accounts so far, they show that the Thunderstorm generator is significantly safer, more reliable, and produces significantly different results to the Geet. Um, even when it's built from less than optimal materials, uh, as some of the initial Thunderstorm generator prototypes were, they're still just displaying these reasonably consistent results with some variation. Uh, the spheres and the harmonic ratios of the spheres and the pipes appear to be necessary elements here. But in this video, um, we didn't even get to the most important observation that Bob has made in his most recent live stream. 
So in the next video, uh, we will cover his observations of ball lightning or plasmoid like phenomena uh, occurring on the outside of the inner sphere of the original eight-year-old prototype, uh, which shows startlingly strong co correlation with the experiments of uh, Matsumoto and many other significant researchers in the field of plasma physics, many of which we've already mentioned on the channel. Uh, this development is significant, uh, and I'm condensing down Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project's new observations to cover tomorrow. So it brings us a lot closer to empirically understanding what is going on here. And uh, also due to popular demand and polite request, I'll also be uploading a new version of the build guide with fixed audio very soon. So you can await that. Stay tuned for the next update. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.